Greetings to all my tech heads out there in the Kev Techify Nation. And if you're new here, welcome. In this episode, we're going to look at configuring a switch with initial configurations. We'll be discussing the switch boot sequence, the boot system command, switch LED indicators, recovering from a system crash, and finally switch management access. This episode is part of my series on switching, routing, and wireless essentials. I'm Kevin here at Kev Techify. Let's get this adventure started. When you first turn on a switch, after it's powered on, it goes through five steps in the boot sequence. The first one is power on self-test. During the power on self test, it checks the CPU subsystems and initializes the CPU. It looks at the RAM, looks at the flash, does a basic inventory of all the hardware in the device. In the second step, the switch loads the bootloader software. The bootloader is a small program. It's stored in ROM, read only memory, and it runs immediately after the post is ran. For step number three, the bootloader software does low level CPU initialization. It initializes the CPU registers, it controls where the physical memory is mapped and quantity of memory. In step four, the bootloader software initializes the flash file system on the system board. And finally, in step five, the bootloader loads the default iOS, the internet network operating system software in the memory and it gives control of the switch over to that ios the switch tries to automatically boot using the information in the boot environmental variable if there's no invariable if there's no variable set they try they load the first executable they can find the operating system then initializes the interfaces with the configuration commands found in the startup config file. The startup config file is called config.txt and that's found in the flash. To set the boot variable, we use the command boot system in our global configuration mode. So we type in boot space system and then we tell it the storage device. In this case, we have stored it in flash. Then, if it's stored in a directory, we put that between two forward slashes. Here, this is the directory that it's in, C2960-landbase k9-mz.150-2.se. That's the directory. And then after that is the file name. File name in this instance is the same as the directory it's in, but it does end in .bin. That bin signifies it is a binary file to load into memory. On Cisco switches, if you look at the left hand side, there are six lights. These six lights all have different meanings and help you identify the state of your router. The first one, the top one, the SYST or the system LED right here. That shows whether the system is receiving power and is functioning properly. If it's green, that means the system is good. The next one, RPS is for redundant power supply. That shows you the status of your redundant power supplies. If you don't have any, that light's gonna be off. If everything is good, it's going to be green. If, it's, if there's an issue with the redundant power supply, like there isn't power to one of the supplies, one of the supplies went bad, that's going to be yellow or amber. The next four LEDs, the bottom one, the stat, duplex, speed, and POE, that is representative of the status on an individual port. What you do is you hit the, hit the mode button until the light next to one of those four is lit, and then you look at the port you want to find. On that port, then, you can see whether that light is on or off. That represents what each of those LEDs of those four LEDs mean. The stat is a port status light. When the stat light is green, you push the mode button so that stat light turns green, you can then look at the individual port and that will give you the status of that port. When the LED next to duplex is green, 
you can look at the individual port. The individual port light then will give you the status of the duplex. Or it will give you the duplex of the port. When the LED is green next to the speed, you can look at the individual port and it will tell you the speed of the port. And finally, the PoE will tell you if there's PoE going over that port or not. Here we have an exp explanation of what the ports and the different colors mean. If you look at the, on the left side of those six lights, if the redundant power supply LED is lit, you can then look and see is, what is the status of that? And we can go through here. If it's off, that means there's no redundant power supply. If it's green, that means redundant power supply is already. Blinking green means it's up, but not available for some reason. Amber means RPS standby or fault. There, there, there's been a problem somewhere along there. Blinking amber means that there's an internal power system failure and that your redundant power supply is disabled. And so by the color in the blinking pattern, you can tell. And then the bottom four LEDs, the stat, the duplex, the speed, and the PoE. You can tell a lot by these lights if you go through and you look at them. And once again, you push the mode button until the one is selected you want to look at. When you look at the status and you highlight the status on the left side by LED, you can look at each individual port. If it's off, that means there's no link or you shut down that port. Basically, you can think about the wires unplugged. If it's green, that means the link is up, it's functional, it's good. If it's blinking green, we're sending data across that link. Amber means the port is blocked, it's preventing loops. And same thing with blinking amber. So once again, by the color, by the blinking sequence, you can tell what's going on. Duplex, you can see here, if you select duplex on the left side and you light the LED up next to it, then you can look at the individual part, ports. If it's off, it's half duplex. If it's green, it's full duplex. Then you can choose the speed. Light the LED up next to the speed on the left side. If it's off, that means it's 10 megs, so hopefully you never see 10 megs. If it's green, that means you're at 100 megs per second. And if it's blinking green, you're at gigabit. And then PoE. You can look at PoE if it's off. If the light if the light on the port is off, that means there's no PoE. If the light is green on the port, that means that PoE is on. Then we have a couple amber lights that means disabled or due to fault. And if it's alternating between green and amp green and amber, it's PoE is denied. It's over budget, meaning you are already running too many PoE things on your device and it can't handle anymore. If you like this episode on configuring a switch with initial settings and you get value out of it and depending upon the platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five star rating, leave a comment. Doing this supports the channel, which in turn helps me bring you more great content. Subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell. You can also visit my website at kevtechify.com for all of my details and how to get these episodes in video and podcast form. Every so often, your switch will crash. It, it, it just happens. And, and when that does, there's a couple of steps you, you probably need to go through to recover from that crash. First thing is, is plug in a console port. Make, make sure you have a console connection. That's probably going to require you to get up from your desk, walk all the way over to wherever the switch is located, plug your laptop in using a console cable, unplug the switch, and then plug it back in. Within 15 seconds of plugging it back in, there's the mode button on the bottom left corner, press and hold that mode button in. Then continue holding that mode button until the system LED briefly turns amber and it'll flash amber for about a second and it'll turn off and then it will switch to a solid green. Once it reaches that solid green, go ahead and take your thumb off the mode button and it, the switch will boot into the basically the bootloader mode. At that point in time, you're going to get a prompt that says switch colon. And notice that's different than, than any other ones. This is before your operating system's been installed. This is basically the bootloader at that point. Now, from here, you can do several things. You can format your flash. 
you can reinstall the operating system file you can recover a lost or forgotten password and this will allow you to hopefully get your system up and going to manage your switch remotely across the network we're not talking about using that console cable and out of band communications we're talking about using the network where you can sit in your office and configure that switch across the network whether that is, that switch is sitting on your desk connected into the network whether it's across the hall across the building across the country or halfway around the world as long as you have network access to that you can use ssh to connect into that switch and do the basic configuration what you have to do is some initial configuration with that initial configuration you have to use your console cable the console cable we connect into there and then you have to set up what we call the svi and the SVI stands for a switched virtual interface. Like the name says, it's virtual. It's not a physical thing. And on that switched virtual interface, you have to set up the IP address. And, and we that's how we get in and we manage our devices. We connect into the IP address that's associated with the switched virtual interface. Now, if you also want to manage your switch from a remote network and, and say, you're going through some routers to get there, so it's gonna be on a different network. You also have to set up the default gateway for that. On your switch, by default, the management is controlled through VLAN 1. Now, all ports are assigned to VLAN 1, and this is the default setting on your device. It is highly recommended for security that you do not use VLAN 1. Choose something else as your management VLAN. Choose something else as the VLAN where you're going to put all of your ports on there. By default, it's VLAN 1. And because it's default, a lot of people, if they're trying to attack your network, know that there's a good chance that VLAN 1 is going to be the net or be the vlan where all of your ports are located and so that helps them along the way if you move it to a different one that just helps protect your system a little bit more now first thing you have to do when you set up your switch virtual interface is configure the management interface with an ip address and here's an example notice we get into global configuration mode we go into Interface VLAN 99. That is going to be our management VLAN. Now, once again, VLAN 1 is the default VLAN. I wouldn't necessarily use VLAN 99 in a production environment because that is what Cisco uses in all of its examples as 99. In a production environment, I would probably use something like that. But we go into the interface VLAN 99 and notice our prompt does change here. We are now configuring an interface. And then just like a normal interface, we go ahead and we set up our IP address. IP for, I, for an IP version 4 address, 172.17.99.1. We put in our subnet mask. That sets the IP version 4 address. And most networks nowadays are, are starting to run IP version 4 and IP version 6. So I would set up an IP version 6 address right away for management. And that's the same command as configuring an IP address on a router. IP version 6, you tell it you want to set an address. And then you put your address in here with the prefix or the slash number at the end. And notice we are using a global unicast address here. We're not setting up that link local address at this point in time we're setting up a global unicast address because we want to go out across the network and maybe go from several networks away and configure our switch now the virtual lan on a switch those are turned off when you create that vlan when you go in and configure it you actually you actually have to go in and turn it on that's where we use our no shutdown command at that point in time, we do a no shutdown. It turns that VLAN on. Then the second step here is to configure that gateway. Once again, if you don't configure a default gateway, you only can manage that switch with the switch virtual interface as long as you're on the same local network. 
But the idea here is we're going to place it on different networks and, and it can go all the way around the world. So you need to put a default gateway in there because the default gateway is where we send IP version 4 traffic when, we, when it's not on our local network. Now, notice here, it is not done in an interface mode. It's done in global configuration mode. The default gateway is associated with the entire device and not associated with an interface. And so in global configuration mode, we, re, we enter in IP and then default gateway is our command. And then you set the IP address there. There is no subnet mask because we are connecting into an existing IP address. This 172.17.99.1 is existing somewhere already and we're not setting it. Because we're connecting into it, we don't have to put our subnet mask or our prefix if it was an IP version six address. That was the two steps, assign an IP address, IP version four and or IP version six. Step two was set your default gateway. That takes care of setting up your management through your switch virtual interface, the SVI. Now to verify our configurations, there's there, we typically there's several commands we can use. The one I prefer to use is the show IP interface brief. And what it does here is it shows us our interface this is VLAN 99, that's the one we configured. Here's our IP address. And then it does say our status is down and down. Now, VLAN 99 won't appear up, up until there is a device connected to a switch port that is associated with VLAN 99. You have to connect a device into a port, that port has to be in VLAN 99, and then it will come up. Even though we put an IP address on there, even though we did a no shutdown on it, we still have to get a layer one connection into VLAN 99. We also have the show IP version six interface brief command, and it shows VLAN 99. Once again, it does say down, down until we get a device connected in. And here is our addresses. It's a, it's a link local address generated by my MAC address. We can tell that because it's got FF FE in the center. That goes in the center of my MAC address. Here's the first part of my MAC address. Here's the last part of my MAC address. And then here's our global uni unicast address. It gives us all of our IP address information there. It was my pleasure to bring you this wonderful episode on configuring a switch with initial settings. If you like this episode and you got value out of it, and of course, depending upon what platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five-star rating, leave a comment. This all helps me bring you more great content. Please take a minute to subscribe to my channel. All of my socials and contact information are on my website, kevtechify.com. You can get all these episodes in video and podcast form. In the upper right is my playlist for my series on switching, routing, and wireless essentials. In the bottom right is one of my favorite videos that I picked just for you. Thank you so much for watching this episode of my series on switching, routing, and wireless essentials. Once again, I'm Kevin. This is Kev Techify. I'll see you next time for another great adventure.